podcasts again. Anyone here listen to podcasts? No? We've got a couple. Do you ever listen to any podcasts that carry advertisements? No? No? Okay. There are some podcasts that um, carry adverts. Um, one that I listen to is The Onion Radio News, and they're usually sort of a one or two minute podcast. Um, it's a piece of satire. Sometimes they're amusing, sometimes they're a bit less amusing. Um, and there's a 10 second um, commercial message um, in there. And one of the reasons that that works really well, I think, as a form of advertising, is if I'm listening to um, my iPod, I'm not going to sort of put my hand in my pocket and forward wind to go past what I know is only going to be a 10 second commercial because you know, by the time I get there, you know, it, it would have finished anyway. And I'm listening to it in headphones, it's coming directly into my ears. It's very much harder to ignore than listening to, say, a television sitting on the side of the room. Um, so that can be quite a useful um, form of advertising. I've also, um, I meant to, meant to give, you, uh, give you an example of this. Uh, there's a company in uh, Northern Ireland that specialise in home automation. So you can um, have, you know, they tell you how you could, for instance, have your sound wired up so that your iPod, you plug it into the dock and you can hear it in any room in the house. Every, you know, you, yeah, every room has its own sensor so you can say what you want to listen to, do you want to listen to iPod, do you want to listen to television, um, whatever. So all those sorts of things. Um, because it's quite a technical type of um, thing, they talk about so there's all aspect of that every week, and obviously there's lots of new technology coming as well. So every week there's a 20 minute podcast, there's a guy in the shop talking about all the latest stuff that he's seen, um, what he's planning to sell, how much it would cost, reviews of different um, brands and so on. And uh, A, it's quite entertaining, and uh, I sort of try to plan to spend all the money I don't have on, um, on, on, on things like that. So whatever your interest, you'll find there are podcasts um, aimed at your interest. There's lots of food, food, drink, um, films, books, all sorts. Um, again, just for some decoration down there, you've seen, you all seen these social bookmarks. How many of you ever use these social bookmarks if you're reading, say, for instance, a newspaper article on the, online? A few? No? Okay. Um, I must admit, I don't do it very often, but I do occasionally. Um, and uh, it's a good way of, if I read something and think, I know who would be interested in that, I can click on it, it goes to my Facebook profile, and then I can sort of easily share it with two or three people that I might think might be interested in something. It's interesting to note that podcasts um, can be very useful, but also, don't do, the, don't do the badly, don't do the Mike's carpets um, uh, example. When the Telegraph started, the Daily Telegraph newspaper, when they started doing podcasts, um, I listened to a few of them, and to be honest, they were cringeworthy. It was people who are very eloquent at writing um, newspaper articles, and they're good at that, and quite frankly should have kept to that, um, trying to have conversational um, podcast, the poor attempts at jokes that they tried to make between them was obviously forced, it obviously wasn't playing to their skills. And then the business editor came, editor came on, started mispronouncing things, and um, got, she, she said something about um, Rolls Royce, you know, some results, and then she started to talk about expensive cars. Um, yeah, she was actually talking about Rolls Royce, the aerospace company, not the car manufacturer. Um, and that's all stuff that in the newspaper culture she could have written and it would have been edited out and only the correct information would have, would have got out. So she was trying to use a medium that wasn't her forte and uh, made a mess of it. And I actually thought, oh, right, and they were a bit less knowledgeable than I thought over there at the Telegraph. So, you know, with anything, with anything that you do online, with anything that you do in terms of communication, you have to be very careful because any mistakes can be um, around the world in seconds. Um, 
and uh, you could spend up quite a lot of time going around commenting on, on them all and uh, trying to make it good again. Mobile phones, they're a really tricky issue for marketing communications. Um, but if you look here, this is um, information just about the United Kingdom, about the number of texts sent um, per day. And you can see that by the time we get to uh, September 08, um, we're into the billions. So, why is that important? If you think that a text marketing campaign could work for you, and there are companies who think it could, um, you need to be quite careful. You've got, you, you're already trying to shout above a lot of other chatter. And I think some of these ideas came about a few years back when the, uh, the amount of texts flying around were sort of down here. Um, there's been quite a sudden and steep rise here. So I, I honestly believe that um, trying to run mass text campaigns is fraught with danger. A, you're trying to speak above a lot of chatter, and, and B, I think people are much more upset by unsolicited text messages than they are by um, unsolicited emails. However, it has been done successfully. These are good days to not try to send um, text message campaigns. Um, so, I'm going to go on to an example where um, someone actually did this quite well. Um, it was done by uh, what was then Daniel Chrysler, uh, now Mercedes Benz, uh, and what they were trying to do was to get people to test drive a smart car. So they used a, um, an advertising agency, the Mobile Channel, and the aim was to try to get people to test drive. They sent the SMS only to people over 21, only to people who lived within a, um, a 25 kilometer radius of a, of a smart dealer. Um, straight away, they've done quite a lot of targeting. They've minimised the number of people that they're going to annoy. You know, there aren't going to be many people who say, well, that's completely irrelevant to me. Um, I live 600 miles from the nearest smart dealer, um, or you know, I'm too young to drive. The, the original, the, the immediate out of that. The first 800 messages led to the sales of three cars. That's, that's actually a phenomenal hit rate when you're talking about big ticket items. Um, and of the first 2,000 messages, one and a half thousand resulted in test drives. So, if done well, and if done with an agency that knows what they're doing, uh, as for instance the mobile channel there um, obviously do, then it can be a very, very simple way. The text messages also said, you know, all, all the standard stuff like um, to not receive any more of these text stop to um, whatever number. Um, but they also that, or if you want more information, send brochure to, uh, in, to that number um, so that people could have brochures sent out afterwards.